Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am your host, Jeff Hutzel, I'm the Chief Cloud Officer with AuditMax. Hey, you guys know Tech Talk is a show where we talk to people doing really exciting and interesting things in the world of technology from all over the country. We've always got some really interesting guests on the show, and today we're going to delve into a topic um, that's, that's really important. It's something that's been in the news, obviously, quite a bit lately, but it's just an ongoing you know, big issue in the world of tech, and that's really the, the world of cybersecurity. So we've got a fantastic guest today. She has got two decades of experience in the industry, uh, formerly in the Security Innovations Principal at Dell Technologies. Uh, she's also appointed to two terms, the Internet Engineering Task Force. Uh, it's named Cybersecurity Ventures, named her the top, one of the top 100 women fighting cybercrime. She's an outstanding faculty member at Georgetown and is author of a new book, Transforming Information Security and Optimizing the Five Current Trends to Reduce, re reduce Resource Drain. Kathleen, I stumbled with the title there, but that's a pretty solid resume. <laughs> so Kathleen Moriarty at the Center for Internet Security, thanks for joining the show. Hey, Kathleen. Thanks, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, that's, that's a long resume there. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, a lot of work. Yeah, so Kathleen, tell us a little bit, for folks that aren't familiar with the CenterNet of Internet Security, you're obviously the CIO there, but what is that organization all about? Kind of what's your mission with CIO? Sure, I'm actually the C uh, Chief Technology Officer, so okay. CTO. And uh, I'm fairly new to the Center for Internet Security, and their business is, you know, we have two main parts. Um, one part is the CIS controls and benchmarks, which many people in the industry should be familiar with. Basically, if you think of your control frameworks like ISO 27001 or NIST 853 or even the NIST cybersecurity control framework, the difference with the CIS benchmarks is that it maps into each of those larger control frameworks, but gives you an opportunity to prioritize what you implement first. The controls are mapped into the MITRE ATT&CK framework and then against the various breach reports. So in particular, the Verizon data breach report. And the significance of that is you have a true prioritization of what are the actual threats being experienced by enterprises so that you know which controls to go after first. And so if you implement the first uh, implementation group of the controls, you wind up with an 85% reduction in risk. And then the benchmarks are similar. They're just applied out to specific operating systems, applications, and over 100 different set of, um, sets of benchmarks. Then the other side of CIS is the operational, and it manages two of the information sharing analysis centers. So the elections, ISAC, and the multi-state. ISAC. So I think a lot of this, Kathleen, you mentioned it, um, for security leaders that are out there that are trying to, to develop an architecture and develop a plan for their organizations and things like that, I mean, one of the things you touch on is, is prioritization, right? There's, there's so many things to consider if you're in that space, you know, whether it's different products and applications and strategies and things like that. You know, what kind of guidance do you give to other security professionals that are, that are looking at kind of this big picture and trying to figure out, all right, how, how do I deploy a, a solid architecture? How do we prioritize the, all the different areas of security that we can touch? You know, what advice do you give to somebody that's in that mode right now? Sure. So the controls and benchmarks, as I mentioned, are, are a really great start. And they fit into the trends that are emerging because we are moving towards an endpoint-focused world with some of the big trends being strong encryption, ubiquitous encryption, even the protocol stack is changing as a result of that, um, data-centric security models where customers want to own their own keys, right? So we're going to see a lot of encryption both at the data level and on the wire. And so thinking about how do you manage at the endpoint and how do we make it scale are really important because we're at a pivotal point where I think we're going to see a lot of change and we have the opportunity to manage better to close the gap in security professionals, which is like 3.5 million or so right now. Yeah, so how do you close that gap? I mean, when you talk about being behind, having 3.5 million job openings, that there's just not the bodies to fill, the expertise to fill that right now. I mean, what's the answer there? I mean, obviously you want to get to more and more people encouraged to come into the field and be educated and, and grow their careers as an opportunity. But until that's, that could be years until that really happens in a significant way, right? So how do 
how do you address that today? Or what kind of things do you see coming into the industry because of that gap? If you take a look at how architectures are set up today, each organization has to deploy numerous inline devices. And so in, in this case, I'm talking about the enterprise, where you might have firewalls, intrusion detection systems, you might have multiple threat feeds to be able to assess what are the threats for your environment. You likely have a SIM system, a, a governance risk and compliance system, and then you have a person to manage each one of those. The way we've established security is that we have all these disparate boxes that require a full-time employee to manage. But as we move towards fully encrypted networks and a push towards management on the endpoint, mm -hmm. we have an opportunity to change how we do that management, right? So that we can push more upstream so that the vendors are providing built-in security and then the enterprise level would have more of an easy button, right? So they wouldn't need necessarily the number of resources they have today because some of those inline boxes will start to disappear. But we have to see first the deployment of controls on the endpoint and having it be built in so that each individual enterprise doesn't have to customize them themselves. And once we see that happen and we have uh, defense as well as built-in security, we can move towards stronger encryption and these improved architectures where we utilize a smaller number of analysts to have a larger impact. That makes sense. And, you, and I know you're a big proponent of just the idea of simplification through all this, right? And whether that's the marketplace kind of coming together and consolidating and, and developing better solutions, or I guess automation, would you say, is, is high in that list as well? I mean, when you think about that in terms of simplification, what are your, uh, what are your hopes there for how that will evolve? So we've done a lot of work um, in terms of assurance and control assessment, but it's been difficult. It's required expertise on the site. And so simplification is really important. And I think attestation from a root of trust holds a lot of promise. You know, right now we're seeing that deployed for, um, you know, from boot for firmware. And uh, the goal is that it would also apply to operating systems, to applications, containers. And we're starting to see that. So there's a, there's several vendors that are implementing container-based attestation to provide assurance so that if you're moving a workload, for instance, you can have an assurance that your workload moves onto a container that meets your requirements. When we get to that stage where you can choose what level of security or built-in security is in your container, for instance, then I think we'll start to see this transition. So that shift towards the vendor providing more controls and more options with an easy button is, is when we'll start to see this change. Brilliant. So Kathleen, is that really what drove you to write the book? I know we mentioned early on in your introduction, you had this, this new book that's transforming information security. Uh, what, what was it that got you excited, made you want to write that? There was a few things. While I was in the IETF, I worked on a document that's now published as RFC 8404 with Al Morton. And it was a really controversial document, and it shouldn't have been. It was merely meant to document what are the hurdles that operators at any level, so internet, enterprise, would experience as we move towards stronger encryption, because the IETF and other organizations were pushing towards stronger encryption that you cannot intercept on the wire. So clearly there's an impact. Mm -hmm. The goal of this was to look at, you know, what is that impact and how do we move beyond it so that strong encryption could be embraced? It was merely a survey. And so from that work, um, there was just lots of information gained from talking to numerous operators, as well as having all of the arguments on the topic. Additionally, while a security area director in the IETF, I was reading about 400 pages every other week. And that was really quite informative, not just what the documents contained in terms of what companies and people were interested in standardizing, but what was the motive from each of the vendors putting forth different standards. And so it provided quite a bit of insight. And all of that led to me thinking, okay, how do we move beyond this? How do we get beyond the arguments? And then the book was the result. 
Yeah, it's fantastic. I've seen great reviews of the book. It's it's very thorough document. I think it's fantastic, fantastic information you've put out there. I mean, as, as you look at kind of what's next and kind of the future of your space and your industry, what are your kind of predictions for what we'll see in 2021 and kind of the next couple of years? In 2021, we will have just some incremental progress on built-in security. And so it may be slow. Um, we might not be at the phase where enterprises could adopt strong encryption the way that the internet has adopted strong encryption. That might be a few years off, but we're going to take some steps towards that this year. And then in future years, I think we'll start to see not only attestation from a root of trust for assurance, but other ways to detect attacks. And I think we'll move more towards allow list approaches from deny list approaches. So if you think about threat intelligence, for instance, we are using indicators of compromise and indicators of behavior to, de to detect attacks that have been seen already. But if you look at something like the IoT space, we have a technology called MUD, Manufacturer Usage Description. Mm -hmm. And this actually shifts us to a, an allow list approach where you're documenting the allowed behaviors. And that's easy to do for a compact device. Longer term, I think we could move towards a model where we're integrating something like MUD, where you're using that ultimately smaller list of allow behaviors than what the deny list would be because it grows over time, um, but integrated at a component level. So if we go to a very granular level, we might be able to define at least some of the allowed behaviors uh, for specific components that would allow you to detect any variances from what is expected. That makes a ton of sense. Well, Kathleen, for, for folks that want to get in contact with you and want to learn more about the things you're doing at CIS and just connect with you and kind of follow you, I know you have some great stuff online quite a bit. I've seen you on a, a number of different podcasts and news articles and things like that. Where is the best place for people to uh, reach out and connect with you? I think LinkedIn would be the best place for a professional connection. Thank you. That's terrific. Well, Kathleen Moriarty, thank you so much for joining us. Again, go check out the book. It's fantastic. And you can buy it at all the places that the books are sold. I've seen it on Amazon there. So pick that up and uh, it's a great read. But Kathleen, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. You got it. Hey, and thank you guys for joining us as well. If you want to see more interviews like Kathleen's, you can visit us at outmax.com or you can even see this and listen to it as a podcast at all your favorite uh, places where you find your podcasts. Thanks. We'll see you next time.